And now the meeting is open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Pilar from New York, go ahead. Good evening. This evening I want to express my gratitude about all that I'm learning in this church and uh, from Christian science. Um, I have been, um, uh, by, with my practitioner, I have been working in certain issues and, um, and things that I have uh, difficulty dealing with. And I have to say that um, I have noticed a big change in my thoughts have changed so tremendously that um, it's it's just amazing. Last yesterday, I took my two grandkids to dinner, and they are small. They are they're very rambunctious. They are two boys that are constantly fighting. So my daughter was a little skeptical to let me go with them to dinner, and but I I went with them and I sat down and I affirmed that they are expressions of love and that there's nothing um, that can be uh, reflected that it will be uh, disruptive or, or, in other words, they they will be making a mess or anything like that. And I have to say that by affirming this, we had the most wonderful dinner, my two grandsons and myself, and um, they were quiet, they were well-behaved. The restaurant was pretty full, so I, you know, I was a little concerned, but by just holding on to what is true about men and about those two precious children, I was, it it was just incredible. And um, I just, I'm so overwhelmed and so grateful for what I'm learning in in this church and for, for the support that I get from my practitioner. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. Shahidat from Maryland. Go ahead. Good evening. Thank you so much for those readings tonight. I would like to express my appreciation tonight for the discovery of founder of Christian Science, Mary Baker Eddy. I've been reading a lot of uh, articles from early Christian Science workers, all available from the Plainfield website. And I'm absolutely awed that this is Eddy. He did the call... Uh, to bring Christian science to the world. It couldn't have been easy, and as I read about these, read these older articles, I am very much impressed with the courage that it took to be obedient to do that, and I want to express my gratitude for her for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara, Barbara from Pennsylvania. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Uh, last week I spoke of being grateful for uh, correction by both Plainfield practitioners. As I understood it, one pointed out some arrogance on my part and the other a need for more wisdom and understanding. I'd like to add that the correction in both cases was lovingly given and wise. We are so, so blessed to have them. Only this week I learned that the Christian Science Board of Directors in 1971, tried to extend the copyright for science and health for another 75 years and were even successful until 1987. In 1983, a group called the um, United Christian Scientists of San Jose, California, brought a suit to overturn the copyright extension with the financial help from Alan Mansfield, who established the... um, Equus Institute, for which, uh, from which the beautiful copies of the 1910 Science and Health uh, sold by Plainfield come. The result was that the extension was ruled unconstitutional, thus null and void, and the board's subsequent appeal was unsuccessful. Thank you, God. It's hard to be grateful enough for that crucial um, crucial result, and for the integrity and courage of those bringing and supporting the civil action that brought it about. And thank you for the service. Thank you. Colleen. Colleen from Massachusetts, go ahead. Good evening. 
Thank you for tonight and the topic on Rejoice Evermore. I'm learning to cling to truth and love and to fill my consciousness with only true thoughts and loving ideas from God, which I know are real and all-powerful. With truth, which is the only reality, and love, which is the only power, I can wipe out all material wispy beliefs, all material arguments and temporary problems, and shut them out of my thinking, because I know they're not real. I know that God does not flood my consciousness with a mess, and I will not either. So, living from true ideas and loving ideas, I know I can't lose, and I know we're all doing this. I know God is ever-present, the only law, strength, and he's the life of all. And I know that loving, living and loving with his ideas, that we as his cherished, cherished children can't lose. Thank you for tonight. Thank you. Hi. Heidi from Maryland. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm more than grateful for this church, for everything that I'm learning here and how it's been an inspiration. At other times, it's been a beacon of hope or a lifesaver. Through its correct teachings and because of a wonderful practitioner who lived and taught it, this church has kept me here for some 40 years. A few months ago, I found myself dropping everything that I picked up. As soon as I had it in my hand, it would just fall to the floor, as if it had a life of its own. I was dropping and spilling food and dishes, papers, I dropped my laptop, you name it. And every time I would drop something, I would begin this inner dialogue of how clumsy I was, or how stupid that was of me. And if people were around, I'd sometimes make a joke of it. But as this continued week after week after week, it became not such a laughing matter. One day as I was taking a cup of coffee out of the microwave, I spilled it, an extremely hot coffee ran down the front of me and it burned my thumb on the way down very badly. <clears throat> and after a couple of choice expletives, I suddenly realized that this was not normal. I finally turned to God for help. First, I asked God's forgiveness and taking his name in vain so many times. Because every time I called myself all those negative names, I was calling God those same names, stupid or clumsy. So then I asked him what I needed to know. The thoughts began to come pretty quickly. The first thing that came to my mind was that my thinking had dropped. I had listened to some disturbing news on the TV and kind of was going around with that for a while. I also um, was going over old tapes in my mind of experiences that were negative and conversations that were disturbing. I, um, I realized that uh, this was part of the problem, and I asked God what I should do. Um, I affirmed that my mind just couldn't drift into evil. And then I declared that God was all in all and that he loved me and I was his perfect child. I couldn't be fooled by animal magnetism telling me that I had some sort of problem that was causing me to drop things. I never could be dropped from God's loving arms. He held me fast and therefore I could never for an instant be separated from him. I continued with this line of thinking for about 15 minutes, and during this time, my thumb had formed a blister. I covered it with a Band-Aid so I wouldn't look at it, and I said, Okay, God, I feel your presence. I know you'll take care of this. Very soon, the pain left. The very next day, I removed the Band-Aid, and there wasn't a trace of the burn or the blister, just new pink skin. It was completely normal, and that was the total end of the whole experience. After that, since then, I have not dropped a single thing. 
I've been watching my thinking and what things I take in. I'm very grateful for everything I've learned here, that things don't just happen by accident. Things are not a coincidence, and that God is always at hand. I'm so grateful for this church, where I've learned how to handle the little foxes, so to speak, that may slip in through the back door. Thank you so much, Independent Christian Science, for giving me a wonderful way of life. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. Thank you so much, Day Day, for having the theme of the readings tonight be Rejoice Evermore. A, f a while ago, a few of us from the church gathered to watch the John Adams miniseries. And I was really grateful to get a deeper understanding of what went on during the time of the formation of the United States. But we're, what really st stuck with me is how John Adams, when he was around 90 years old, seemed to finally find out how to be happy. He spoke to his son about how he finally understood Paul's directive in 1 Thessalonians 5.16, to rejoice evermore. That has stayed with me. As many people I used to know had felt I was never happy, or at least not happy enough. And in truth, I wasn't happy. How could I be happy without purpose and without God? What a profound difference these last years since coming to Plainfield and learning Christian science has been. Finding my purpose in this work and finding that God is right here and was all along. What a shift from that old way of thought. I wake now just elated to get up and get into this work. And for the first time ever, I love being alive, and I smile often through the day. To rejoice evermore no longer seems like a foolish or impossible thing to strive for. I did it yesterday, I'm doing it today, and I can see no reason why God wouldn't make it, be, make it possible for me to do it tomorrow. What a good God we have. I'm so grateful for this church, for Christian science, for this work, and for the simple fact that I can be honestly happy and joyful now. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the beautiful music. Today, I was feeling a deep gratitude for an individual I worked with. A Plainfield practitioner had been praying with me during a very difficult work experience over many months. I know this woman joining the work team during this period was a direct result of the practitioner's prayers. Looking back at the timing of her coming and the role that she filled demonstrated such a practical expression of God's care and protection. She brought a sense of clarity, principle, honesty, kindness and courage midst a situation that seemed to lack all these qualities. I appreciated her support at the time, but it wasn't until recently that I realized how profound this timing was in the healing process and deep lessons. We both were lifted out of this unrighteous environment. During this time she also was protected and an opportunity to do something she loved had opened up. I'm very grateful for the practitioner's support. Um, I also, as I was sitting here tonight, I really had a deep sense of how grateful I was that Plainfield was out there on the internet and I found them before this happened. Because um, I, 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 there's no way I could have survived the situation without uh, the practitioner's support and the, the things I'm learning here. I'm so grateful for God's care, for Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy for this science. Thank you. Thank you. Shardell. Good evening, and yes, um, the readings are absolutely wonderful and are beautiful music. I'd like to offer my gratitude for practitioner help and ongoing work with seeing God as the only power which eliminates any belief that error of any kind is real. 
I have been working with this truth, and the other day, when a family member started talking about an illness, I was able to mentally rebuke this lie, and immediately saw it as unreal and having nothing to do with anybody. It was a great feeling of freedom and love. The conversation quickly changed to a positive topic, and I didn't have to say a word. It is wonderful to be part of this Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, where God is first with Christ, and Mrs. Eddy has her right place. Thank you. Thank you. This is Bruce. I'd like to share my thanks tonight for a wonderful blessing that we've had here at the church. For some time now, we've been planning to uh, replace our air conditioning equipment, and it's now has been done. We got some wonderful equipment. It's working wonderfully well. But in preparing for this project, um, I was actually hoping that we could save some money by me doing uh, some of the electric wiring. But in order to do so, I had to have a licensed professional who was going to work with me and uh, cooperate. And we even found someone who said, yes, I'll work with you and help you. Except it, he just stopped answering his phone calls and wasn't making himself available. And the time was coming, running close to when our HVAC uh, contractor was going to begin their installation. And I was feeling a little bit of anguish about this whole thing. And then I opened up hymn number 374 in our hymnal. And we're actually going to sing that again later on tonight. And one of the phrases in this hymn, it says, We thank thee when in anguish. We turn from sense to soul. And I read that and I said, Dear Father, I have been feeling some anguish and haven't really felt like thanking you, except now I see what the instructions are, that I do indeed need to thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have a plan and your plan is perfect. And your plan is much better than my plan. And I need to be willing to abandon my plan and to thank you for your plan. So I started doing that. And then I called up our other HVAC contractors and said, hey, I haven't arranged for any electrician. Can you help us out? And they said immediately, yes, we can. So they got their own electrician to do the wiring. And just recently, the bill came in for the whole thing. And amazingly enough, with discounts and everything that our HVAC contractor gave us, the total bill was just almost the same as their original quote for just installing the equipment alone without the electrician. So it proved that God's hand was on this project all along. And that my job was to thank him and turn from sense to soul and let his plan work out, which it did. So we're thankful. I'm just saying, standing here tonight, thanking God. He has a wonderful plan. And I'm willing now to let it show what it is. <laughs> Thank you. Day-Day <clears throat> Day from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm grateful for finding true joy through my study of Christian science in this church. I've learned that my joy is found in God and not in anyone or anything else. And since God is all, is ever-present and infinite, my joy should be the same with me at all times. In this church, I found true purpose in life by realizing that God has some good for me to do each day. With this new understanding, I'm finding it easier and easier to maintain my joy consistently rather than being overcome by challenges or unfavorable circumstances as I once was. This is a tremendous blessing for me as it allows me to continue working for good 
radiating joy to bless those around me rather than focusing on self, observe, absorbing anything that would cause prolonged sorrow, disappointment, anger, and so on. This is one of the greatest gifts, and I'm forever thankful for the freedom that is given me. Thank you so much for all the work going on in this church, for the upliftment that is giving me and helping me to give to others. I'm so grateful for tonight's meeting, and I'm very, very grateful to be here. Thank you for all the testimony so far. Thank you. Sharon. I'm grateful for a healing I had today. I called a practitioner to discuss a few things um, about some church work. And when I had called, I wasn't feeling well. I had a headache and a stomach ache. But after speaking to the practitioner, I realized I had been healed. It was the Christly love that's always expressed. I'm so grateful to Mrs. Eddy for having the Office of Practitioner, for what we're learning here, for the practitioner help I'm receiving, and for all the good that's going on. And I'm grateful for those wonderful meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Fairly from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. I want to express my gratitude for all that Plainfield has offered me, and I'm so grateful that I found Plainfield on the Internet. First of all, for my excellent practitioner who is always available to support me and help me in every situation. And for all the literature Christian science of, in Christian science that is offered here, books of early workers I had never heard of until I came here. Our Bible studies and roundtables where we're taught so much every weekend. And thank you for the lovely readings on rejoicing forevermore. I rejoice forevermore that I'm a member of this church. Thank you. Carol. I'm so grateful for God's protection. Um, we had an unfortunate incident in our neighborhood recently, and I spoke to a practitioner about it this morning. And the practitioner said to remember, no plague can come nigh thy dwelling. And also that life, truth, and love are a law of annihilation to anything unlike themselves. And as long as we are living life, truth, and love, that's a protection and it just keeps any, anything of, a, of, an, of an evil nature away. It just totally repels it. I am so very grateful and our neighborhood is nice and peaceful and uh, I'm very grateful for, for the truth that we, we get anytime we call for help. I'm so grateful to Mrs. Eddy for giving us this religion and uh, boy, it really... It's a wonderful way of life. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. I want to, uh, first of all, thank Dady for uh, readings on such an important, important point for Christian scientists, for anybody to, uh, to aspire to. Um, Mrs. Eddy writes in our textbook, the trials are proofs of God's care. And isn't that something to rejoice about? <laughs> I remember when I first came to Plainfield uh, and found a, a remarkable uh, practitioner who healed uh, very well. Uh, I would often find myself uh, complaining when I had problems or illnesses or any other kind of situation. And um, that practitioner would shore up my thinking and heal me. Uh, and one thing after another in my life was healed. Illnesses, um, character issues, uh, business problems, family problems, they were all healed by shoring up my thinking 
and turning to God, being responsible for my own situation, and expecting uh, to grow spiritually as a result of whatever situation I was facing. And after a while, I began to look forward to problems <laughs> because it was such a joy to get close to work, to get closer to God and gain the dominion and the freedom over whatever that problem was. And I began to understand a little bit about what Mrs. Eddy meant when she said, when she wrote, trials are proofs of God's care. It also taught me to rejoice evermore, regardless of what situation I might be in. So I'm very grateful for Christian science, for what I have been taught, the good practitioners I've been able to work with, and for that very important point that was brought out tonight. And uh, trials are proofs of God's care to be able to understand a bit about what that means. Because God's care is something to rejoice about forevermore. It's so good to be here tonight. Thank you. Florence, Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Tonight I'd like to express my gratitude also for the readings on joy and rejoicing. Because I remember a time where when I was so depressed, I really never thought I would be happy again. But through Christian Science, all the articles, so many teachings from all Mrs. Eddy has given the world, I started to really understand that joy is really part of my being. And to start to be joyful no matter what is happening. This took a long time, but I learned to let go of the burden thoughts. And I'm so grateful that writers like Kimball, Bicknell Young, Peter V. Ross, and so many others have shared what helped them for us to follow. I also know that during those challenging times, a thought came to me that said, a living utterly dependent on God is full of harmony and strength. And I haven't forgotten that. So when I try to go out with the thought that I will go out to bless and try to smile, you know, smile with, with joy. And this week, I was sitting by a lady out in a car rental place. And she said to me that, you know, your smile gives me, gives me hope. And she followed it with all so many challenges that she's having. And it made me so grateful for the fact that I have learned to bless when I go out because someone did it for me when everything seemed so dark. A lady in, uh, uh, she was a teller, and her smile gave me hope. So I'm so grateful to learn this, that without even doing anything, I can learn to bless by making it a point to be joyful in my heart. I'm so grateful for the readings tonight, the music, everybody's testimony so far. And thank God, Christ Jesus, and Mary Baker Eddy, the revelator to this age, for all she has done to give the world our salvation. Happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Mary. Um, I have a few things I'll read tonight. Uh, the first, a note from Ohio. Dear Plainfield, Thank you for all that the Plainfield provides. I love the new format of Love is the Liberator. As always, it is most enlightening. Gratefully yours. And then another a letter from Vermont. Dear friends, years ago when I first saw a copy of the old Christian Science Sentinel with the image of two women holding lamps, 
I secretly wish that image could somehow be restored. Fast forward to finding the Plainfield Church and learning about true Christian science. So it was with the greatest joy to unwrap the new Love is the Liberator magazine with its, with its theme of forgiveness and on its cover the beautiful image of the two women holding lamps. I read it from cover to cover and it filled me with uplifting inspiration. I especially liked the article Recapture of Enthusiasm by Peter Ross and the article Compassion by Benjamin Duque amongst all the other wonderful articles, gems, and testimonies. What a beautiful thing to behold. Thank you to all who put this blessed publication together. Please also find enclosed a donation to the church to be used where it is needed most, with love. And then I'll just read a, a couple things from our church website bulletin board. Um, we're certainly grateful for all of you who write on the bulletin board, but sometimes we just don't have time to go to read all of it. So the first um, is from Virginia. I had some quiet time at my office today and chose to listen to the roundtable discussion for August 12th of this year entitled From Sense to Soul. These discussions pr provided by this church are so profound and give you so much to reflect on and to consider with regard to your progress in your development of spiritual sense and understanding God. In the past, when I felt myself moving forward and advancing in my study and understanding of Christian science, as brought out in this discussion, something would come along to try to steer me away from that path. And, let, and unless you're really on guard, you can be caught up in that thought, and then you realize that you have been wasting your time and spinning your wheels, entertaining matter, and have, and have gotten absolutely nowhere. This church and all of its wonderful discussions provided through the weekly Bible study and the round table are a learning and disciplinary rod which keep you on that straight and narrow path which in turn furthers your advancement in your understanding of God and his relationship to man, moving you into the realm of spiritual sense. My gratitude and love for finding the Christian Science Church independent and its wonderful website is ongoing. And then from Florida, thank you. Recently I learned that same lesson. I opened the door just a crack to the material world and got clobbered as it took me for a ride, which was all good as it helped me to choose to stay on the straight and narrow. In the blue book, notes on Mary Baker Eddy's Course in Divinity, on page 158, Mrs. Eddy writes, for every material sacrifice, there is a spiritual blessing. Right desire is the deepest form of prayer. Many years ago, when we had the practitioner and also teacher in this church. Her name was Mrs. Evans. After we would have the lesson read on Sundays, she would get up and give a few remarks. And many of those times I remember because what she said was so important and it helped me in so many ways. And during one of those uh, sessions, she was speaking about First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, which is, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And I too thank Dede for those beautiful readings tonight that she gave. Well, in this talk with, that Mrs. Evans was giving, um, she said she had read about a doctor who had said that there were many people in the United States suffering from what he called a nameless anxiety. They would be very upset and about things but not really know exactly what it was that was bothering them. And she said in, in her talk that the real antidote for that was these three things, to rejoice evermore, to pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. Now at that time, 
I was suffering from anxiety, and I, I guess you could call it a nameless anxiety. There were times I didn't even know why I felt so anxious. I seemed to be anxious about everything. So when I heard that, I decided I would work on that, and I would work on those three things in my life and incorporate them. And we're taught here, you don't wait for healing before you give thanks. You give thanks, period. And you rejoice, period. And you pray, period. You just do it because that's, this is the will concerning us, according to God, as this in Thessalonians says. So I began to do that. I, I, up until then, I think I was waiting. Well, after I get over this anxiety, I will rejoice. And after I, after I get over the anxiety, I will um, feel better, be grateful, and pray. <laughs> but this was a command to do it now. And as I began to do it, to rejoice whether I felt like it or not. You think about all the things you have to be grateful for. So you rejoice, you give thanks, and you pray. And pray means you keep your thoughts stayed on God, asking Him for His guidance, His help, be thinking about Him always the, to the best of your ability. And guess what? As I did that, this nameless anxiety left. It was the antidote. It always will be the antidote. According to the doctor in the doctor's report, it was why so many people were taking, at that time, I guess it was Valium and other things to calm their thought. But God always has the answer. So I'm so grateful for those verses. I'm so grateful for this practitioner. I'm so grateful for the wonderful readings tonight because this truth does live on. It's the truth of the Bible. And if we apply it faithfully, it brings healing and blessing into our lives. So grateful to be here tonight with you all. Thank you.